Alright everyone, um, shit, there ain't enough fucking light in here. Um, so, I want to talk about uh, a load I just got done. Uh, I'd imagine most of your flatbedders might know it if you're ever in Pennsylvania around Allentown or um, off 81 by Hazleton. Um, I ended up picking up a load uh, in Persona of uh, aluminum, uh, aluminum uh, extrusion, they call it. Uh, now, the place is called Hydro, and it is in Schuylkillhaven. Well, it's Cursona, but it's like Schuylkillhaven, right off of uh, 61, 81, 61, and 78, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, put it this way. If you're an owner-operator, and uh, you have your own authority, I don't know, you might be able to make out at this place. Um, but I would suggest if you're a flatbedder, which most of these loads coming out of here are flatbed loads, I wouldn't take these loads unless I had a Conestoga, because most of the time, these loads are multi-stop. Now, I had an eight-stop multi, uh, well, it was supposed to be an eight-stop multi-stop load. Uh, all in, um, all of these were supposed to be in Indiana. Um, I don't have the paperwork offhand. I, I can't remember the first stops, but um, but I know it was like Shelbyville, um, Terry Hunt, uh, three stops in Indianapolis. Um, uh, I'll, you know, I'll name the I'll name some of the company that stopped that. Um, uh, O'Neill Steel. I went to both of them. One was uh, one was in Shelbyville. The other one was farther up. Uh, north off 80 um, and then uh, the three stops in uh, Indianapolis were uh, Arrow they make uh, they make Conestogas man mine's it's been a it's been a rough week <laughs> um, they make Conestogas uh, I did a stop there dropped off uh, also dropped off at, uh, I think it's a Reinhardt steel, work, sheet steel, and uh, Huntington. I dropped off in Huntington, uh, Illinois, at Huntington Sheet Steel. Uh, now, mind you, when I first uh, got this load, it was supposed to go out. It was supposed to go out Sunday. I was watching it because I live right down the street. I heard, you know, heard you could drop your trailer off and everything. So. Uh, I wanted to take it Sunday, but it was only paying 2800 for eight stops. <laughs> and this is, let's just say, it was a Landstar broker. And I weighed it, and, you know, I figured somebody else would take it or, or you know, highball it. Because I, I couldn't call anyway because it was the weekend. Nobody was picking up over there. So Monday comes around, and the load suddenly jumps up to 32, 3200. So. I decided, well, let's uh, let's try it. I figure I figure that I could get it done in uh, two days, maybe three, two and a half. I figure I'd be done Wednesday, the latest, midday Wednesday. Uh, so I ended up going in there, and uh, I called up the broker, and uh, the land store broker was like, uh, "Yeah, you know, uh, 3,200. The load's already wait late." Um, you know, as soon as you, you know, what's as soon as you could be there? I said, well, I said, could I do 38 on the load? And he said, well, let me check. He says, ah, the highest I could do is 35. And you know, it was a Monday, so I was like, I could do this in two or three days. I said, hey, are these uh, open delivery times? He said, yeah, sure. So, all right. So he sends me the Raycon and everything. And you know, the Raycon had the stops and. Uh, and everything on it and then you know the numbers to them and, and that's it and uh, you know what order they want to stop so it was eight stops so I get there I drop the trailer off and I dropped it off around like 1130 and I go back home now mind you uh, I started my clock because I had to go drop the trailer off I, I could have done personal conveyance you know but let's, let's just not get into that we're not um, I'm not out here to be a uh, renegade trucker. Uh, 
um, you know, you'll, you'll, eventually you'll get caught, caught doing that shit. So I dropped the trailer off. It's like 15, 20 minute drive from my house. Dropped it off, went back home, finished my laundry and stuff for the week. Uh, you know, odds and end things. So, uh, it's about 4, 4 o'clock. I give them a call. Nobody picks up. Can't get a hold of anybody. And then I decide to call Landstar by 5, 5 o'clock. And they get a hold of them. And the scale house says, yeah, your load's going to be done in like half hour. Well, about 5.30 comes around. And, uh, yeah, about 5, 5.30. And, um, you know, so I get there, I'm like, all right, it's great. I'll get there, hook up to the trailer. Um, from what I was told is they usually strap and everything, which, eh, they threw some straps on it, but they didn't, they didn't really do it right. So, so I get there, and, um, they tell me there's fall protection. And I, I watched the video, and, and, you know, I, I didn't think it was going to be that much of a madhouse to, to use the fall protection, especially at 5.30 at night. So I come around to go inside to uh, to get to, uh, my trailer, and um, it's about 10, 10, 12 trucks in there. Well, not really in there, but wait, some waiting to get in, some in there, just jammed in there. Uh, Cause they got like three or four fall protection stalls, and then they got a self tarper. So I finally made my way in there after I don't know about an hour, hour and a half, two hours. Um, hooked up to my trailer. I'm looking at this load. I wish I, I wish I took pictures of it. They basically put this load on there to ruin my life and to kill people. And that's how they did it. They stacked, they stacked tubing up on top of uh, aluminum cross members for flatbed trailers, you know, like Great Dane, you know, just uh, dry van trailers or whatever. Actually, flatbeds too, I guess they've got uh, aluminum cross members too. But, um, yeah, they basically just, they didn't give a shit. There was no, you had a, you had like a five foot, five foot tall load sitting over top of like six, six inch, six inch to a foot pallets. You know, there's, how the hell am I supposed to strap that? So, I was there for like another hour going over it, strap, trying to strap it, trying to make it so it's not going to kill anybody. Um, trying to make it as legal as possible. But hey, it's going to have a tarp over it, so unless I got pulled in the scale, which is yet to happen. Um, you know, that's that's what's going to happen with that. So, after all that mess and everything, it's probably like 7 o'clock now. I got every... Uh, I, I had cardboard, I put cardboard on here, because they wouldn't let you get on top of the trailer. So eventually I had a stall, I threw some cardboard on top of it in fall protection, and... Um, I had uh, moving blankets. I, I every moving blanket I had, I put everywhere, and I, I already knew. I even duct taped corners and stuff. I, I knew I was going to get screwed. I knew I was going to cut the tarp up too. I, I somewhere. I, I didn't think it was going to be as bad as it was, but it's, it still happened. So, mind you, it's like seven or eight o'clock. So, I come out of there. Um, yeah, it's probably about eight o'clock, eight thirty. And I'm like, well, it would be near impossible for me to take the tarps and fling them out over this damn thing without without killing myself or slicing my arm open on all this shit. Um, so I decided, hey, use a self-tarper. So after I waited on the one guy to get done, for some reason they let him, uh, after they put the tarps on, they had him, uh, you know, bungee cord it all up there and everything. So at another hour, two hours go by because... Uh, I don't know, he was flinging cardboard all over and everything. Company driver. Um, I finally got in there. Now, I, the self tarper was great. It was awesome. I, I wish everywhere had it. So by the time I got out of here, then waited, waited at the scale house for my paperwork. It was probably about 10 o'clock. My day's done. I, I wasn't, I was hoping to get out of there around 6, 7, maybe earlier, and at least drive out drive out to uh, the 500 miles or 400 miles to uh, uh, my first stop. Let me, let me pull this up real quick. So let me just tell you what my first stop was. My first stop was, was New Haven, New Haven, Indiana. So it's not that far from, you know, I could have easily done it if I had time. If I, 
they wouldn't took so long to load the flatbed, which I, which from what I was told, it was already sitting out, ready, just ready to go on the flatbed because it was already late to load. It was supposed to be loaded Sunday. So that's what I was told by the Landstar broker. Um, now I get to the scale house, and I, like I said, I waited there for a little bit. Finally, they get my paperwork ready, and they're like, "All right, you got nine stops." I said, "Excuse me," I said, "It's an eight stop." No, it's a nine stop. They had a stop. So I'm looking between my Raycon and and the stops, and they added a stop in Reynolds, uh, Reynolds, Indiana. Well, I looked it up compared to where it was in the line, and it would have put me like two hours, two hours out there, just about plus, you know, unloading and everything, and then two hours back to. I think my next stop would have been, I don't know, either Terry Hunt. I don't know how they had it had it set up, but um, all I know is that I looked it up and it was going to be like a an hour and a half, so two hours to get stuck because these are old country roads. So two hours to get stuck behind somebody slow. Um, so now I'm like, great. Uh, that, that, that was unexpected. So, you know, I can't call Landstar at 10 o'clock at night. At least, at least the broker I dealt with, he ain't going to be there. So I wait till in the morning. So I ended up spending a night there because I didn't feel like uh, putting myself on PC to go home even though I was right there. Um, and I got up around, uh, let's see, by the time I could start my clock, it was like 5 o'clock in the morning. Because I didn't mind you, I, uh, I put myself off duty while I was uh, tarping. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't going to sit there and waste all my on-duty time. So I got up at like 4 or 5 o'clock, left, and uh, drove all the way out to this O'Neill Steel. Well when I got my paperwork no well no when I got my paperwork from the uh, the aluminum uh, yeah from the, the scale house at the aluminum extruder uh, I didn't really look at it I just looked at the stops I didn't go through the small print on the bottom there you know it always says must tarp and yada 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 and the shipper wants this and that done uh, and the receiver wants this and that and everything. So um, I get out there and the uh, it's about three o'clock. And about halfway out there, looking at the paperwork, I start noticing. I'm looking at it. It says uh, they only received to uh, what was it from seven to eleven. I'm like, great, great. So usually, you know, I only had like uh, two or three uh, aluminum rods to unload there. So I ended up calling there, and the first girl I spoke to was very rude, basically said I was screwed. And uh, so I ended up calling back again, and used a couple different extensions, and got a hold of the operations manager, and asked him, and he said, yeah, sure, if it's just flatbed, I mean, if it's just a couple bars or something, um, you know, like two pallets, uh, we'll take it off with the forklift, no problem. So yeah, so that's how that went. And then I started looking at every, every uh, stop I had. Every stop had like a four, five, six hour window maybe to make a delivery. I was like, oh, here we go. So my next stop after that, I figured uh, it only took me maybe half hour, 45 minutes to get done with that. And like I got there just about before three. So it was like uh, 3.30 and the uh, next stop was Huntington uh, Sheet Steel. I was like, great before five o'clock I could probably get in there they'll take off their two little pallets you know uh, of aluminum or whatever it was and, and I'll be in and out well I call them up come to find out we got to make an appointment and they're only there from 7 to I think 12 uh, is when I stopped receiving and they told me uh, I couldn't park in a parking lot so yeah, that whole day was wasted. My whole Tuesday was wasted on one stop. And I'll tell you how the rest went, but they pretty much went same on, same on. So now about this extra stop, I called the broker the first day. I called him twice. And so I'll let me see at the boss. He kept stalling, stalling, stalling. Well, day two, called him three times. Uh, same crap. By day four, he quit picking up his phone. Or, or either had it, uh, as soon as they saw it was me, they uh, transferred it to a girl who just acted stupid like she didn't know anything. So, that ninth stop they added on me, there was two hours out of my way. I, I, didn't, I didn't deliver. It was supposed to be third stop. I didn't deliver it. 
I waited all the way to the end. Um, because I ended up going out to Terry Hunt to the uh, Great Dane, which I was supposed to make a 24 hour appointment out of that. Called that a couple times, uh, they wouldn't pick up. Got a hold of them, they're like, well, uh, it's a little, it's like, this would be like 12 hours, so, uh, you know, there ain't nothing we can do for you. So I just showed up, luckily they unloaded me. Same, same thing with uh, Aurora Parks over there in Lebanon, uh, Indiana. Same thing. Uh, luckily, the guy said just come in before 12. Uh, that's when the crane, you know, crane guys, well, actually crane girl, stops uh, stops operating the crane. That's it. So I got there luckily before 12, and they got that off. And then, and then my last stop, which was only like an hour away from Lebanon, I get there and uh, it was a pole. Uh, for, I don't know, I ended up dropping it off at a power substation, but luckily I was able to get a phone number to somebody and they were able to come out, at least sign the paperwork. And pretty much we picked it up and dropped it on the ground there and that was it. So I ended up spending four days on a load that paid me $3,500. Uh, I probably did maybe 1,000 miles. I think that's what it was. It was supposed to be like 900 miles round trip. At least that's what the great call was supposed to pay. But I'd say it's 1,000 because uh, that extra stop. Actually, it might have been a little over 1,000. I'd say 1,100 maybe. So, yeah, I did 1,100 miles, nine stops for 3,000. I mean, uh, yeah, 3,500. And uh, wasted my whole week just about. On something I would normally have charged, like at least if I thought it would have been this much bull crap, if you didn't tell me it was open appointments, and uh, if I'd have had the paperwork in my hand. Uh, from the shipper, or at least been able to see the paperwork, I probably would charge like $1,500 a day. I told him probably be about yeah, $1,500 a day. You know, I said if it take four days, it's going to be this. You know, to be honest, I, I might even just do a flat rate, just say $5,000, $6,000. Um, so yeah, so I got outsmarted by a Landstar broker and uh, this cr crappy uh, hydro aluminum extrusion place. You check. Uh, I didn't bother checking it, but if you check the Google reviews, there are plenty of Google reviews on there of how much scumbags they are. Uh, they take forever. This, that. Um, they ruin things. Um, I tell you what. I, I had a lot of tarp repair to do after this load. Uh, between coming on and off, on and off. Uh, I even put edge protectors and stuff. It, shit falls off. You know, if you're going to open the tarp that many times. And, and you push it back on it, it while it's under there and you know it's flapping around in the wind a little bit it, stuff falls off stuff wiggles stuff moves it's it's inevitable so all this aggravation for this $3,500 load that I thought was going to take maybe two days tops uh, after that first day I pretty much figured it was going to be about three maybe two and a half three days which I still wasn't that mad about it but then it turned into a four day load and uh, yeah, so what what ended up coming out is I'm still going to end up making uh, making like 7,500 for the week. Uh, I ended up uh, actually yeah, I'm going to make more than that, I think. Uh, the load I just got now is going to New Haven, uh, which is a bad area to come out of anywhere up there, but like New Haven, uh, um, Maine, uh, Massachusetts. You know, stuff coming out. It, it's it's hard to find stuff for a flatbed. I mean, you can find it, but it pays cheap. It's usually shit loads. So I ended up got um, got a load going up to uh, New Hampshire. It's paying thirty eight hundred, and you know, it's going to make up my week. Um, right now it's Thursday. Well, yeah, it's still Thursday. I drove down the road from that last stop to a nice pilot, brand new pilot, right off sixty five here. Um, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's brand new, I guess it's it's brand new, I don't know how long it's been open for, but, um, so I'm going to take my 34 hour here, so I have a brand new week next week, and this Saturday at 5 a.m. I'm going to pick up some steel, I don't have to tarp it, I don't have to do anything, just chain it, and go, uh, and I'll be in New Hampshire by Monday, probably before Monday almost, it's only 900 miles. 100 miles for $3,800. Uh, I, I, uh, 
I could have pushed a girl. She was really nice. I could probably maybe push her up to four thousand. <laughs> I, I wanted four thousand. Um, a little bit greedy, but she was she was cute. Like sounded cute. She was nice, nice and everything. So, <laughs> so I gave I, I gave in and did thirty eight. But yeah, that's uh, that's how it's easy to get screwed by a broker and a shipper if you're not careful. I just jumped right into it because it was down the street from my house. I was hoping I could get a steady run out of there, either through Landstar. I know Landstar usually down, down, you know, downplays their rates and everything, but I, I still thought it was an easy load. I thought I'd have it off. I, I've done plenty of multi-stop loads, six, seven multi-stop loads that, you know, I've usually called the company and look, I got a pallet for you or two pallets or whatever, or, or bundles or I don't know, whatever I got, pieces for you, you know, I know you only deliver from here to here, but hey, you know, you, you know, can I come, you know, afterwards? Oh, sure, we have a night shift. They'll take it off. It's only two pieces, right? Sure, you know, no problem. You know, I've I've had tons of those loads like that, but this one, this one turned into a nightmare. Um, it, it almost got to the point where I, I thought I was going to have to just park the truck in front of the uh, security office, like especially a Great Dame, and just. Hey, you know, I ain't moving until you guys take your shit. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to be here Friday. I'm not going to be here Monday still running this load for $3,500. So that was my, my blunder. Um, this video is already 20 minutes long, so um, just, uh, just, man, I can't, I can't even figure out. I guess if I had read Google, I would have, you know, asked more questions to the broker or or even called up, if I could have maybe even called up uh, the scale house before I even took the load and, and talked to, you know, talk to one of them. Uh, I, I don't know if they'd have told me anything or not, but just try to find out a little bit more about the load. Like he said, there was nothing in Raycon. It said, uh, you know, these certain delivery times or 24 hour advance notice needed to be given for, you know, I needed to set my own appointments up. Um, as far as I know, they were open appointments. It was a multi-stop for their customers, which, hey, you know, it's your shit. Take his buck off my truck and have a nice day. Um, so yeah, it kind of like reminded me of doing reefer again. <laughs> you know, or even drive in, you get those moments where people just, you know, they pay for their shit, but for some reason they don't want their shit because they want to play games. So, um, the moral of the story is, uh, Hardball your broker, try to get as much out of them as you can. Uh, ask plenty of questions. Uh, if you can, try to pick up the loads during normal business hours. If you think you're going to get the paperwork out, try to get the paperwork first. Look at the paperwork first before before you play the little game. Make sure there's the same amount of stops on there. If there's not, you can call the broker right then and there before the stuff's loaded on your truck and tell them, hey, there's an extra stop. I want x amount of dollars for this extra stop it's this far out of the way and what are they going to say no uh, i'm not going to pick up the shit just have them send you a new raycon make, make sure you have a new raycon sign it send it back and bam there you go you get paid for an extra stop um because they will you know what i bet you i bet you they probably called up hydro and said yeah you got an extra stop on here it's going to cost you another four or five hundred dollars oh yeah okay fine yeah you know what that broker did? He probably poked, pocketed it at four or five hundred dollars, and I got fucked out of that money. So that's what happened with that. All right, I'm at like 25 minutes here soon, so I imagine you guys are already tired of hearing me uh, rambling. So you know, uh, have a good one out there. You know, uh, subscribe, like. Uh, I'm gonna try to uh, make some better videos. Talk about. Talk about more about like the owner operator side of things. Uh, I don't know. Just put some comments down. Anything else you want to know or hear? Uh, maybe talk about some of your uh, some of your uh, broker blunders. If you want to call it that. And uh, yeah, have a good night. Stay safe on the road.